So we got the Pelican case set up and we got the rack mounted set up. Pros and cons, benefits of both. Let's start with the benefits of just having everything into one set up where you just hey real quick i just want to let you know that i'm going to leave in the description where you can purchase the uh pelican case that's used in this video and i also linked the video to uh the youtuber zephan who i watched his rack mount build step by step and i'll link both those videos where you can purchase the pelican build and where you can watch the build of the rack mounted build basically popping open the lid and then you can get live streaming that's the first benefit of having um you know a case and they also increase mobility as well as reduce the wires now i know there's a lot of wires a little bit looking crazy here but the space that i'm working in is pretty small so this setup we have the ATEM mini pro um this case is built to handle up to the ATEM mini extreme as we have the eight outputs you know, the uh, the two USB-Cs and two uh, HDMI outs. Um, and over here, we have the Extreme set up, with this set up with two HyperDux and a portable monitor. Uh, I'm sorry, a pull-out monitor. Portability-wise, this is the best setup because it's the lightest um, and slimmest. Um, and if I did need more ports, or if you do need more ports with this system, you can have this with an ATEM in the Extreme. But since I put my Extreme on this setup, I just use this one now for just ATEM Mini Pro ISO for four out, output. So I'll use this on smaller jobs that I need to be more mobile with. Um, this is mobile, but it's heavy. So transporting this into my into my truck and taking it out is you know is it's 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 draining but this does have wheels on it so once it's on the ground you can actually just roll it but just picking it up putting it on the desk taking it down off the desk and putting it in the car can be a hassle so uh bringing this is a hassle but i still prefer to bring this one over this setup is because this setup requires me to bring extra gear so with this setup because the ATEM Mini Pro does not have uh, two HDMI outs, it only has one out. So in order for me to get two outs, I have to get a streaming bridge. And I talked about the streaming bridge in my uh, other video. This streaming bridge allows you to get an additional HDMI out as well as two SDI outs, which I actually just tested out today and which is we're outputting one of those uh, SDI outs onto this wireless uh, director's monitor. And what's great about this is I'm using a uh, Hollyland and Hollyland has, uh, they have the SDI port. So I'm able to use Hollyland's SDI out from the S I'm able to use the SDI out from the streaming bridge to Hollyland's SDI in. And then I'm transmitting that to this monitor, but just using the HDMI port. So that streaming bridge is actually very powerful and is also sending the, in the HDMI out from this. The HDMI out from the streaming bridge is actually going to my live view solo, which is showing the live stream through here. So this I'm using my live stream. I use my live view solo to push my streams to the internet to use the cellular bonding technology for whenever I'm you know, in a location where internet will be a problem. Uh, this is a HD media player, which I use to do video playback uh, and just plug it into one of the USB ports. So that's what I didn't want to forget. This is another thing that you have, that I have to add on. Uh, and it isn't the best, but it works. The reason I don't, the reason it's not the best is because when you hit pause, you'll see a pause button come up on the actual screen that's not good and it stays there for about three seconds so usually when i if i'm playing an intro video it's fine because i just push play first and then once it goes away then i'll bring it onto live but if you was running it using it for anything else then it would you know be on a live stream and that's kind of unacceptable for 90 percent of the live streams whereas this setup we have 
we use this hybrid deck to do all our video playback. So, and you know, and this, it works because it's a black mag design. It works perfectly with the whole system. Like, if it's queued up, as soon as I press feed, it'll start playing right away. So, you know, it's the best way to use that way. But if you don't want to use your laptop or you just want another player that can just play something too, just get your, get yourself an HD HD media player. They cost like thirty dollars on Amazon. So that's what makes this setup, uh, you know, not as intuitive as this setup. This one, everything is kind of built in, whereas this one I had to do a lot of tweaks. But the tweaks isn't bad compared to my original first setup that I had with a flight case and all these cables everywhere and nothing was neat. So with this setup, we use the, uh, the Ethernet port. We run the Ethernet port into a switch. This switch gives us multiple Ethernet ports, which is how we're going to connect this this Ethernet cable. Is this Ethernet cable is connected to the ATEM Mini? Then we use this Ethernet port, which goes to the streaming bridge. Once this Ethernet port hits the streaming bridge, I now get multiple HDMI outs, two SDI outs and one HDMI out. Sorry, and having this capability lets me out to the Live View Solo because the Live View Solo needs an out. Because the other, the original out from the ATEM is coming to my, from my multi view. So having the streaming bridge out to this and have the ability to still out the two more sources using the SDI. For instance, if you need to send it to a director's monitor or a confidence monitor or whatever kind of monitor, just to monitor the uh, program feed, you can. So that's a very powerful having the streaming bridge. It's very powerful with the switcher because the switcher gives you the ability to connect the streaming bridge and connect your laptop to the same network as well so that you can still control the ATEM mini software. And all of this setup can run off of this Jackery, I think this is the Jackery 300. The Jackery 300 will run this whole setup for four, uh, five to seven hours, uh, which is not bad for this. I think this costs $300, $300 or 350 it's not bad to run this whole setup. Now, this setup, uh, we're using the Jackery 1000. And the Jackery 1000 can run this setup for about um, five to seven hours, depending on what all we're running through there. Um, so, like, this whole setup is pulling about 32 watt hours, while this setup, when, it's, when I'm running everything, Right now it's at 111, 108, but I think when I have my mixer plugged in, that's like another 10, so it's usually around 130. So that's this whole setup usually pulls around 130 watt hours, while this setup pulls around about 30 watt hours. So which is why I'm able to get five to seven hours on a 300 watt hour, and I'm able to get five to seven hours pulling at 130 on a thousand watt hour. Okay, so sorry doing this whole video on the fly and from my phone. Next, let's see. Okay, so back to this setup. So this setup, like I said, this setup is great um, because we rack mount everything that we needed. On the back, it's gonna be hard to see the back, but I'm gonna try to make, make it work. Let's see. Hit the flip on it. There we go. So on the back, we have an Ethernet switch. We have an Ethernet switch here. We have the custom. Uh, Redco import inputs and all these inputs are for the eight HDMI inputs the the uh, HDMI out I have the SDI's seven and eight converted the HDMI seven eight converted to SDI's to have that flexibility to run SDI cables too we have the um, the two mic ports we have them as XLR cables. And I use converters like for my wireless go. I don't have them up here with me, but use the wireless go. You need the uh, the little converter that converts this into the 3.0 millimeter jack, and that works perfect. And this also runs when I'm using my mixer too. So having these as XLR ports has been uh, really really beneficial. Um, and here we have another S S SDI out as well as an HDMI out, and these outs are coming from. These outs are coming from the uh, the hyperdecks. So 
This hyperdeck on the on the right we use for video playback, and this hyperdeck on the left we use to record the program as a backup. This is the ISO. It records the, the uh, each ISO recording as well as the program. But having that backup just in case, because sometimes I have had the uh, SD as mm, this the um the SD I miss all these words the sand disk. SSD stop recording on me uh, multiple times so it really depends on the the USB-C cable that you use I'm noticing I have tried a few before I finally found one that for the last couple streams has not cut off on me but not only does this record the um, program out uh, this also has an HDMI out and SDI out which we use which we just showed you in the back which I'm able to send and do the same thing I'm doing with this. I'm able to send the S HDMI out to my LiveView Solo, and I'm able to use the SDI out wirelessly to something like my director's monitor. So, well, essentially, this whole setup, this is built in. This is built into here because we have the gig and that switch in the back. We have the extra HDMI port so we don't have to, to um, use the streaming bridge on this setup because we have multiple uh, HDMI outs and SDI outs. And what else don't we need? And uh, everything is just packed neatly and more controllably like this one goes in, this comes down and go in. And you know, we got the cases that we put in the front and back and then you can just roll this case to, you know, your next job. But like I said, it is heavy, just getting it you know, just getting that initial transport, but it's just such a powerful machine just to have on site, knowing I have everything all in one. And this is so small. When I do bring this, I bring this as a backup because this is just, you know, it's just a case. You close this down and lock it up and then you're ready to go. So I bring this as a backup to this. And when I have a smaller job and I'm coming out with this, I'll, I usually just bring like uh, this YOLO box as a, as a, as a backup. Um, so I just wanted to kind of do a quick video of, um, the, the two streaming units that I've used. These are the, this is the second and third setup. I had my original setup outside of heaven. No setup was a flight case, um, with stuffing everything inside of the flight case and uh and have an external monitor on top of it it was it was cool it was but it was very heavy that was probably close to as heavy as this but no wheels so and uh and it wasn't as portable as this so this is kind of like this one for me is like the mixture between this setup and my previous setup because it's heavy like the previous setup but it's very contained and portable like this setup so this is kind of like the best of both worlds but it is kind of heavy uh, that's the only downside to this is it just being heavy um, but it has will so that helps with it and it's still manual you can still pick it up and sit up in the be at but it's just it's one of those things where it's like oh man I gotta lift this up so hopefully this helps in some way or give you some insight of what you know streaming unit you would want or if you only limit it to like um, you know, an H, uh, uh, the ATEM Mini Pro with only four SD, with only two HDMI, I mean one HDMI out, you know, this setup with the streaming bridge and the network switch is going to uh, really save your setup, especially if you're going to need one of those outs to use a, a unit like the LiveView Solo. So, found this video helpful. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe as it helps my channel out. If you have any questions, of course, you can always just leave a message and I'll get back to you if I can. Thanks.